As Pam and CCM partners in the Team Unity Government await a parliamentary sitting to hear a motion of no confidence against the PLP partner, Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, the Pam and CCM partners are prepared to go into new general elections. Pam's leader and Deputy Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis made a statement to the media on 26 April 2022 saying that the partners are confident that the motion of no confidence will be successful and ensuing general elections will allow Pam and CCM to proceed in developing the country in real partnership based on trust. Richard said more progress could have been made on the team unity but pointed to ministerial interference and financial deprivation. Even more progress could have been made were it not for COVID-19. One man sat in a cabinet corner quietly and systematically undermining his own colleagues. Not even his own or the PLP colleague was spared because she too was undermined. The plot to undermine was to serve one purpose only and that was to claim responsibility for all of the success. Many of the projects were to be undertaken by CCM, PAM, and even the other PLP minister were frustrated and starved of money from the Ministry of Finance. And the reason was to make us look bad and make one man look good because later he would implement some measures and claim that only he was responsible. But my fellow citizens, that was the past. We are now at a new beginning. As true patriots of these two small islands, we must never doubt our abilities and resilience to recover from even the most difficult experiences like we suffered in COVID-19. Nor should we have any fear that St. Kitts and Nevis will continue to prosper in the coming future. According to the PAM leader, it was necessary for PAM and CCM to take steps to protect the coalition and to put it into a corrected path. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. The governance of the country is at a crisis point, says opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas. Speaking on WinFM's Island Tea show on Tuesday morning, Dr. Douglas said an early solution is needed to address the current political crisis in the country. Crisis of governance in the sense that um, the parliament, it would appear, will only now meet for the hearing of a motion of no confidence in the government. The cabinet is not meeting, and that is critically important. Um, and so the whole governance agenda that would be expected through the constitution of our country, I think, is at the crisis point. Dr. Douglas also addressed the motion of no confidence filed against the government by members of the Team Unity Coalition partners on Monday. Right. But if you were to listen mm. to what has been out there and mm. what the men have been saying, that is our cabinet colleagues have been saying, you get a feeling that a lot of the issues that came up um, now are issues which I cited in December of 2020 and some of which I think could have been alluded to back in 2011, it was 2011 mm -hmm. when that motion was initially and originally filed. Mm -hmm. There has been much consternation in the public domain among coalition partners that the People's Action Movement and the Concerned Citizens Movement over disagreements with the leader of the People's Labour Party and the Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris. That disagreement has led to the partners indicating their withdrawal of support for Dr. Harris as Prime Minister and the subsequent filing of a motion of no confidence on Monday. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. When visiting St. Martin, you want clean, affordable accommodations. You need Midtown Motel in the heart of Phillipsburg, a place where you can relax, take a stroll on Gray Bay Beach, and that provides you easy access to great shopping. Midtown Motel, located on Front Street, Phillipsburg, St. Martin. Call Midtown Motel at 721-542-0614 and book your stay today.
The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports. All from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Nestled between evergreen mountains and the Caribbean Sea on the island of St. Kitts is the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, with breathtaking views, a rugged, beautiful shoreline, and immaculate manicured gardens make this the perfect location for your holiday, event, or wedding. With a large convention center, apartments with balconies providing stunning views, and a secluded cottage for larger family groups or honeymooning couples looking for some privacy. We have something for everyone. Book your stay at www.millhouseskn.com or visit our Facebook page, the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, an oasis of tranquility. Sean Richards, the leader of the People's Action Movement, said the time has come for St. Kitts and Nevis to shake off the remnants of the monarchy and pursue a path towards republicanism. Richards was presenting a statement to the media on 26 April concerning a recent filing for a motion of no confidence against sitting Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris. With the three-party political coalition all but over, Richards was putting forward ideas for the future under a two-party coalition team unity government once successful in a general elections. According to the PAM leader, the idea of a head of state under a republican system is an idea whose time has come. The full actualization of our political aspirations to chart our own destiny under a republican system of government where a petition on a vision sits as our head of state. Two, the advancement of the decades has taught us that the time has come for St. Kitts and Nevis to review its monarchical system of government and to begin the dialogue to advance to a new status, just as Trinidad, Guyana, Dominica, and now Barbados have done in the past. Three, however, this will not be pursued along partisan lines. All political parties, along with civil society and the youth, will have an opportunity to guide the way forward. These thoughts on republicanism are of my own, and I would have to dialogue with the partners. Which has also spoke of constitutional dialogue, education, social and economic pursuits of a restructured and reinvigorated two-party team unity. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. The UNESCO St. Kitsinevis office said it supports the fair remuneration of authors and the protection of cultural identity in spite of the challenges presented by digital transformation. That is the view of Dorothy Warner. Secretary General of the UNESCO National Commission for St. Kitts and Nevis. She was speaking in an address in commemoration of World Book and Copyright Day. Despite the importance of books in sustaining social well-being, the publishing industry is currently facing major upheavals, most notably the digital transformation. These challenges became very clear during COVID-19 when falling revenues amplified the vulnerability of authors and booksellers, like other creative professionals across the value chain. Cultural diversity was also threatened as the number of titles published ineluctably diminished. In these uncertain times, we must cherish and defend books as symbols of hope and dialogue. 
This means standing in solidarity with the professionals who disseminate our literary heritage, writers, editors, publishers, and translators, as they build bridges across continents and cultures, these professionals must be protected and their value acknowledged. Ms. Warner said storytelling is an incredible way to educate children here and worldwide. I call upon all of UNESCO's partners to show that the message that books are a force to address contemporary challenges, to understand political and economic realities, and to combat inequalities and misinformation. Storytelling is an incredibly effective tool for educating younger generations. Indeed, books are vital vehicles to access, transmit, and promote education, science, culture, and information worldwide. World Book and Copyright Day is observed on April 23. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at voiceofthecaribbean.net. Tune into Voice of the Caribbean Radio for great Caribbean programs, news, entertainment, sports, and current affairs. Wake up each morning and be inspired with One Day at a Time with Kim Huey. Stay abreast with news across the Caribbean and internationally with the Caribbean News Hour and be entertained with shows like Reggaeville, Caribbean Classics, and Jive Music Show. Visit our website, download our Android mobile app, or listen us on TuneIn Radio. There is so much more on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check website or app for program schedule. Are you ready to create high-performing TV commercials? Ready. 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 Create and tell compelling stories. Reach your target audience. And build brand awareness. Our strategies and execution will provide for your desired outcome and clearly represent your brand. Visit us at www.madebyopen.com and get started on your creative video commercial today. Lights, camera, open interactive. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto Plus Car Wash, where the service is number one. Up first this evening, it was an emotional first day back at school for the new term at the St. Andrew Technical High School today. Teachers and students wept openly as they mourned the death of Omar Leng. The football rising star was killed by gunmen on his birthday last Friday at the intersection of Charles Street and Orange Street. Today, members of the JCF's Chaplaincy Service Branch and the Safe Schools Program offered support to the school community. Kirk Wright has the details. Three days after Omar Leng was gunned down in downtown Kingston and his friends and teammates at school are still in disbelief. There was weeping in the school's library on Monday where his colleagues and teachers gathered for a counseling session with the police. The students hurting beyond words, some clearly needing a little more attention. Inspector Tanisa Johnson of the Safe School Unit feels the safety of students 
is not being taken seriously. I am bleeding inside. Because too long, as a nation, we get into a level of hypocrisy as it relates to safety and security of our children. Too long, as parents and as stakeholders, we forget our mandate. We forget the reason why we are adults. We also forget the reason why we are placed in the lives of our children. She says Omar's killing should stir greater response. Nobody should have gotten any good rest. The citizens of this country should not have slept quietly in their beds over the weekend, not after hearing about the death of this child. Omar was a member of the school's Manning Cup team. He was one of their main goal scorers. But as one teacher puts it, he represented much more than that to his classmates. He said Omar displayed other admirable attributes. When I observe him sitting with the ballers, even when they were discussing some things not so right or saying some words, I could never see Leng taking part. He will just there sitting calmly, calmly on his phone or just observing. That's Leng. Peace. Someone of peace. The school's principal, Warrell Hibbert, urged Omar's classmates not to allow his death to cause them to drop their performance in school or on the field. He says now is the time for them to press on. If you really want to honor Omar Lenny, stay in school, yes. do your that's school right. work, that's right. That's right. stick to the task at hand. Yes. That's the only way you can honor Lenny. That's the only way you can honor your brother. The police also cautioned the students against trying to avenge their classmates' killing. From the Jamaica Constabulary Force, we pledge that we will put out all stops. We'll stop at nothing at all. And this is not just talking. To ensure that those who are involved in the killing of young Omar will be brought to justice. And that's a promise, and we'll be delivering on that promise. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. After a decision by public sector unions not to attend a meeting with government last week Friday, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell is requesting another. Addressing scores of party supporters on Sunday, during the official launch of the NNP caretakers for the St. Patrick constituencies, Dr. Mitchell said he wants to see a resolution to this issue. This decision is a decision for each worker in the public service. That is not a union matter, directly so. But because the union are representative of the workers, we call on them to let us sit and look at the issue and see how we can work things out together. According to a government release, only two unions, together with the prison and police associations, attended what government deemed a consultative approach to the recent High Court ruling on the pension matter. Public Workers Union President Brian Grimes explained that their absence at the meeting was on the advice of their attorney, James Bristol. We don't just do things ad hoc here at the Grenada Public Workers Union. We, we operate professionally. So we examined the content of the correspondence and what we discovered is that there was no agenda. Um, the, the agenda was extremely broad. Policy consultation and pension. What is that about? The Prime Minister responded to this. Now I can't understand what that means. Because if you are coming to discuss an issue involving your workers, how can you allow anyone to tell you not to come to the meeting? Sisters and brothers, I am not mad. According to Grimes in a previous interview, the crux to moving forward is that government has yet to confirm it will honor the judgment. He said once this is done, the union would gladly sit with government and work out an implementation and payment plan for pension. In a press release issued last Friday, the Public Workers Union made its demands on the government to immediately indicate to the nation that they will accept the decision of the court and uphold the constitution of this nation, and two, 
begin to implement payment of outstanding gratuity and pensions to all qualified retired public officers in 2022 and going forward. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. <music> Good day, I'm Joe Fryer. We're coming on the air with breaking news. Moments ago, Vice President Kamala Harris's office announced that she's tested positive for COVID-19 today on both rapid and PCR tests. She is not considered a close contact to the president or first lady because of their recent travels and has not exhibited any symptoms, but is going to continue to work from home. Let's go right to NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Peter Alexander with more on this. Peter, what do we know? Joe, we just learned that the vice president, Kamala Harris, will be isolating and staying at the vice president's residence, which is a matter of miles away from here at the White House. They say she will not return to work until she tests positive, uh, tests negative, I should say. That positive test coming just this morning. The vice president, uh, not a close contact to the president, which is notable because of their travel schedules, as they say. The vice president arriving back here in Washington late yesterday. She spent most of the last week in Los Angeles, where she and her husband have a home, and also in San Francisco, participating in some fundraisers and a limited schedule of public events here. Obviously, this is the latest and and now long list of high profile administration officials who have tested positive in recent weeks. We have learned that some cabinet officials have tested positive as well. As for the president himself, he is regularly tested. And to this point, we understand that he remains negative. A little bit later today, the White House will be holding a briefing. For the first time at the podium will be the COVID coordinator, Dr. Ashish Jha. Well, the White House will be formally a announcing the purchase of 20 million uh, treatment courses of an antiviral pill made by Pfizer called Paxlovid. That's a pill that they're hoping more Americans will take because it can significantly lower the risk of hospitalization uh, and as of deaths here. The last time that President Biden saw the vice president, we have learned, was about eight days ago, not yesterday, Monday, but the Monday before during the Easter egg roll before she headed off to California. But again, Joe, at this time, we were told that the vice president, Kamala Harris, is having no symptoms, that she's fine, frustrated, according to some aides, that she can't go back to work, but that she understands the CDC protocols. And for now, as you say, she will be isolating uh, at the vice president's residence until she's safe to return, Joe. All right, Peter, thank you so much. Let's bring in senior medical correspondent for NBC News, Dr. John Torres. So Dr. Torres, we know she's not showing any symptoms, but that doesn't mean she's not contagious. What isolation methods will the vice president have to follow now? And Joe, that's correct. And right now the CDC guidelines have reduced that down to five days, but it's five days starting from when she tested positive, which I'm assuming tested positive today. They consider today day zero. So she'll have to isolate herself Wednesday through Sunday, those five days. And then on day six, she can go out in public, but will need to wear a mask for the next five days as well for a total of 10 days. Now, one thing is if she starts developing symptoms between now and the end of that five days, then she needs to start the whole clock over again. And that would be day zero and add an additional five days to that. The same thing, if she decides to test, they recommend an antigen test in that five day period if you decide to test. And if that's positive, then you have to start the clock over again. So at a minimum, today through Sunday, and then Sunday, starting Monday, she could go ahead with the mask, get out in public and be around people, Joe. Her office says she has not been a close contact to the president. What would be considered a close contact? So per CDC guidelines, a close contact is being within six feet for 15 cumulative minutes in a 24 hour period. So it could be five minutes here, five minutes there, and an additional five minutes. But they're talking two days before symptoms start, or if you're asymptomatic like she is, two days before that positive test. So if the test was today, you go back two days and was she around him Sunday or Monday or today, and that would be considered a close contact, Joe. And we should note, she received her booster, her second booster, less than a month ago on April 1st. Hearing that, I mean, what does that tell you? What does that remind us about these boosters and the roles that they play right now? So these boosters play a critical role, and she got her second booster on April 1st, so it's had time to become fully effective at this point. And we know for a fact that right now we're looking at the vaccines as keeping you protected from serious illness, hospitalizations, or death, and not necessarily keeping you from catching COVID, and in cases like this, not having symptoms or having very mild symptoms. So it looks like the vaccines and the boosters are working very well in her case because so far she's asymptomatic, and hopefully she stays that way, Joe.
Jamaican track and field athletes continue to light up the world with stunning performances even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges it presents. In this report, Jerome Fost from Jerome Foster, we examine the impact that COVID-19 has had on our elite and junior athletes in competition just over two years since the country identified its first case. Even with the easing of COVID-19 restrictions worldwide, the virus continues to be a threat. But prior to that, several of Jamaica's junior and senior track and field athletes contracted the virus in and out of competition. Eight athletes tested positive for COVID-19 at the World Athletics Under-20 Championships in Nairobi, Kenya. But almost a year on, a few returned to the recently staged Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championships to break records. However, for senior athletes who contracted the virus, it has not been smooth sailing, according to Professor of Sports Science and Biochemistry Rachel Irving, who started a research nine months ago. We tested positive in February of last year, went to the Olympics, didn't do well. We did a test after, and the inflammatory processes are still there. Is neutrophils are high, lymphocytes level is still high, basophil level is still high, and there is something wrong with this platelet. It came as a surprise to researcher Jason Lewis as well, but he identified what might have resulted in the superior reaction from the younger athletes. They would have been exposed to immunization, immunization that actually build up a rapporteur of B and T cell that helps with um, immu um, the immune system strength. The athletes presented normal oxygen saturation levels. Well, that is just a minor part of the process. And when we checked, they were at 97. They're about, you're not expecting somebody who uses the lung regularly, who tend to train regularly, and who is fit metabolically to be at that level. Introducing certain nutrients such as vitamin C, vitamin E, those are free radical scavengers. So what happens during the inflammatory process, right, as a result from having the virus, right, those can actually help to reduce the inflammation in athletes and help them to start perform back to the level that they were, they were at. Through mere ignorance, the athletes could also be under the microscope. Because if you don't know that you, are, you had COVID and you go to get tested by water and your blood cell range is out of range, your white cell is high, they're going to target you because that's not your normal reaction. And if there is an atypical finding and they say to you, why is this atypical? Did you have COVID? And you say, no, I, I never had COVID because you didn't do a test for COVID. Then you might be sanctioned. Professor Irving added that majority of the athletes were asymptomatic after contracting the virus. Jerome Foster, TVJ Sports. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Boone. Here is a look at the four-day forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. For more detailed weather report, visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com.